Hello, today we're going to be making this geometric deer fly through thing in Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. Um, well, really this one, but you can download the project file and see how I added all those textures and effects. Um, and as a quick disclaimer, I'm going to be using some scripts and plugins to speed up the process, but you don't need to have them. I will explain ways to do it without them. Um, okay, let's begin. The first thing I did was find an image to reference. I really like this deer that I found on Unsplash from an awesome photographer, Philip Pills. Make sure that you're closing off individual shapes so you have a lot of unique layers to animate. So in the beginning, I was really kind of tracing over this image um, to get kind of the, the form and structure down um, and creating a lot of planes based on the image. And then I toggled it off and I went back and I started deleting shapes and deconstructing it and, and distorting it so that it felt um, more right for this composition. Then I brought in a color palette and applied it with uh, darker colors in the back for the neck and antlers and lighter colors for the head. Then I pushed everything into After Effects using Overlord and re recolored specific areas. Left antler one color, right antler one color, neck one color, and the head one color. And this will come in handy later. If you don't have Overlord, then just take this artwork layer, click this button, release layers to sequence, and then with all these new layers that were built, highlight them and pull them onto their own layer up here. And then now you can just save this file and import it in After Effects. Uh, the old, uh, dirty, disgusting way that you normally would. Now that we got all of our layers imported, let's go ahead and make everything 3D. And we'll make a new camera. And we'll attach this camera to a new null object. And let's make these a different color. I like orange. You can do whatever the color you like, and we'll make the null 3D. Call this camera control. All right, and I'll lock these for now. So we need to make this push through effect, but uh, I don't want to do it 86 times, so I'm just going to do it once. So let's grab all these layers and press P, and we're going to separate the dimensions of all of these. Um, so let's just make a keyframe on everything and now right click and click separate dimensions and that'll separate everything and then with them all selected still just undo oh that doesn't work okay does that work okay that works and then un delete that keyframe all right so now let's just focus on one for now. I'm going to grab my big nose here, wherever this may be. Here it is. And I'm going to isolate this. And let's say, let's make this, uh, let's make this seven seconds, six seconds. How about, it's a nice time. We're going to make a keyframe at zero seconds. Let's say one second in at the end, so six seconds, and then one second from the end, five, which is five seconds. So at the fir at the beginning, let's push it back. So push it back really far. Then it comes forward, and then at this second to last keyframe, it's gonna push forward a little bit. So it's just a steady push forward. And then at the last keyframe, it's gonna zoom through. There we go. So if we look at it without any easing, this is what it looks like. That's really nice. Great. Now let's add some easing. So for we're gonna add it to these two only. 
for this one, we want it to ease in. So let's make that zero, influence like 69, outgoing zero, zero. And then for this one, we want the opposite, zero incoming, zero, and 69 out, influence zero. Now, that's going to be roughly pretty close, so it's pretty good. And I think I'm probably going to want maybe this pan, this, uh, pan distance to be a little farther. Thinking that feels pretty good. So now let's open up the graph editor here and see what this looks like. So basically we want this curve to line up with there. We'll really crank this out to make that zoom in feel good. And then it should feel like it just steady sp speed went in there. And that ain't right because that should be the opposite of that. So we're going to bend that back out. There we go. And you don't want this to be on the zero pixels per second line because you want that steady, steady movement happening. So let's see this again. All right, looks pretty good. Close enough for this. I'm gonna copy all of these keyframes. We're gonna go ahead and just paste them on every layer. And let's see what this looks like. What the hell, that is not right. So what happened there was I accidentally grabbed more than one thing. I only want to grab the position, the Z position. Now let's try that again. That's right. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to stagger this stuff a little bit. So I'm going to grab all of these uh, greenish ones and let's say stagger them maybe 0.15 frames and we'll say the same thing for maybe the right antler and then maybe the left one gets 0.25 and same with the neck and you can see what's happening here it's kind of starting to get some more dimensionality that's happening. And if you want to push this even farther, I would go in and make these in individual ones more unique. So maybe you push this one back. Cool. I like where this is headed. So now we want to do the same thing for our camera push. So we're going to, on our camera layer, our camera control layer, let's separate this dimension again. And on the Z position, let's make these same keyframes. this real nice curve action. And then that looks great. And one last little touch on the camera I want to do is I want to do the same thing, but I want to add a little spin to it. So I'm going to add, first I'm going to add a little expression, which is time times one, which is going to spin it one degrees or one value over time, and then plus value. And what the plus value does is it lets you Add your own little spin to it, I guess. I don't know. And then now we're going to keyframe it. it. Makes it so you can keyframe it. And we're going to add these same keyframes again. You guessed it. You're going to start seeing a trend here. I like to do everything on these beats. It makes it really easy to work with. All right, that spins pretty nice, but I want to make it. I just want to grab all of these 
and just spin it back a little bit so it's like kind of uneven when it comes in. So now it's got basically like that. I like that. All right. All right. So now let's make a let's make a new null object. Call this bad boy flicker controller. And let's add two slider controllers, slider controls to this. We're going to call them frequency and amplitude, amplitude. All right. Open up the opacity on one of your layers. I'm going to isolate this. And also I'm going to lock this up here make it easier to work with and alt click this opacity and we're going to type wiggle get these brackets open with this open pick whip this to the frequency then type comma and then pick whip this to amplitude and then now let's type in some values I'm going to go with 5 and 150 because I already know this looks good because I've done it. And I can see this one's gonna be flickering. Cool. And we can control this layer with this slider. What's the point of doing this, you may be asking? Well, let me tell you. You can right click, copy expression only, and now paste it on every other layer. Now all of our layers are flickering and they can all be controlled by these sliders and you can mess with these values Oops. and do whatever kind of flicker. You want a fast flicker, you want a slow flicker, any kind of flicker you want to do, you can do. So one last thing I did here was I created one more null object called a focus null. And if you grab your this null and your camera, you right click the camera, click camera, link focus distance to layer. What that's gonna do is, and let me bring up my second view, you can now uh, move this null object around in 3D space and your focus of the camera is linked to that layer and you can start to do some really kind of interesting things here especially if you you know mess with the aperture a lot and this helps kind of really elevate things to a dramatic level uh, so yeah just play around with that feel free to download the project file peek around Feel free to leave me any questions or comments. Um, let me know if you like this video. I'm thinking about doing more like this. Um, yeah, thank you if you've made it this far.